Welcome. In this session, we will learn how to solve a differential equation graphically and how to solve a differential equation using cement. Let me let's start. Now, before I show you how to solve these differential equations graphically or using Simulink, uh, let me uh, illustrate some few things here first. Now, suppose I have dy by dt is the input, and we know when we solve a differential equation, our aim is to obtain y of what is y equal to? So the goal here is to obtain y or y of t. That's the goal in solving the differential equation, means how to obtain the solution of differential equation or simply how to obtain this y. That's the goal. <clears throat> now, now, in simulating what we can do, if the input is in dy by dt, so if the input is dy by dt, since I have one block available to you, available to us, that is the integrator block. That is the integrator. If I put an integrator block to this, what will happen? This integrator will cancel this differentiation and the output will be y, or y, or y, t. The output will be simply the solution. So the, if the input to the differential equation is, oh, sorry, if the input to the integrator is dy by dt, output will be simply y. We know integration and differentiation cancel as each other. So the output will be left with this. All right, I hope you know this concept. Same way, if I have a double derivative now, so if the, if I have block available to me, and what I can do, I can take the input to this and put it, input an integrator block. This long S means integrator block. So we know the output will be, so one derivative will cancel with this integration. So I will be left with the other. This is how we obtain the output of this second order derivative, which is possible through an integrator. Same way, what I can do, if I want to obtain y from this d2 y by dt square, so what I can do, I can integrate this twice. So what we can do, and put an integrator here, so the output will be in dy by dt. And then I can integrate again and put an integrator there. And this s minus integrator here, and the output will be y or simply t minus y is a function of that. So this is how I can obtain the derivative of this uh, out in this solution of this derivative. All right, so this will be the concept that I will use to solve any differential equation. Now, to illustrate this, let me take an example of a differential equation. Let's start with a second order differential equation. So let's suppose we have a second order differential equation and the differential equation is a d2 y by d2 square b d y by d plus c y Equal to x. And this is our differential equation. Y is the response of uh, this response or the output of the differential equation or the system that is governed by this differential equation and x is the input to that differential in that system, uh, the system that is governed by this differential equation. All right, now for simplicity, let me take this input for some time equal to zero. So if the input is zero, we know the response of this is called the natural response of the system, if you remember it a transient response. This is also referred as natural response in circuits, our controls theory, a transient response. This is the minus y here will be the natural response here, if you remember it. So this is a system described by the differential equation that's given here and my aim is to calculate what's y of t. It will be this y of t. Now if I solve this analytically, you can do that. The solution of this differential equation, let's suppose a constant. Let me take the value of this six. This is just an example. So let's suppose this. So the differential equation is so the differential equation is five zero. So this is our differential equation, and we want to solve this differential equation. Now, if you obtain the solution of this differential equation when the input is zero, this is referred as complementary function. In network theory, the solution is referred as transient response or natural response in control system. If you remember it. Now, if you solve it for these values of the coefficients y of t, how to obtain the solution analytically? That you can check your math book. 
solution looks like this. This, this is a second order differential equation. So it will have two constants uh, of integration that's referred as C1 and C2 here. So that this will be the solution of this differential equation. And this is referred as general solution if you remember it there. But if you solve, if you substitute the value of the initial condition, suppose the initial condition is y is initially equal to zero, and first derivative of y at t equal to zero is one. Let's suppose this is just an example. And if you substitute these initial conditions, the solution becomes like this. The solution of this differential equation is simply e raised power minus two t minus if you plot this solution in MATLAB, if you plot this solution, you can do that. The solution looks like this. The solution is simply like this. The solution looks like this. So this is the solution. This is our y of t as t varies from zero to infinity. So this is the solution of this differential equation for this initial condition, for this initial condition and coefficients. Now, how do you obtain this? If you remember it, we obtain the characteristic equation of this differential equation first to then take calculate the roots of that characteristics that, and that's calculated here minus two and minus three you can check it yourself then we know the solution will look like this if you have studied the differential equation course this is not my goal here my goal is to solve this differential equation graphically when is using simulink instead so what we can do here so let's forget this analytical solution part let's not worry about how do we obtain this analytically but instead how do you obtain the solution graphically are using simulink. So what I can do, so the differential equation here is, let me take the same coefficient. It is y double dash minus x raised to y dash y. So this is the differential equation. So what I can do, y double derivative means the highest derivative here, I can put it like y dash. So sorry, this is not, this becomes minus on the other side. So this is the differential equation. Now what I can do, so the input is double derivative. So the input is the double derivative means this part, what I can do, if I put it through an integrator block, if I put this through an integrator block, so this is the integrator block. So I know the output will be, so this is my double dash, output will be y we know this right if we put integration one in differentiation will cancel with this integration it will be y dash then what i can do i can again perform the integration of this and i can again perform the integration of this and the output will be y this now, how do I obtain y double dash? We know the y double dash is equal to five y dash minus six y. You can check. Y is available at this point. Y dash is available at this point. So what I can do, I can multiply this, whatever is this y dash, I can multiply this by minus five and uh, this y by minus six. This is actually my response. This is what I want. I want this and multiply it by minus six, then add these here, then add this and this. And so if I add this, we know minus pi y dash minus six y is same as y double dash. So this is how I obtain the solution of this. Now, how do I obtain these minus five and minus six values? Means how do I multiply this with this? This there's a block in MATLAB that's referred as game, game that we haven't see, seen in the first two sessions that we will see that in, in this session. So this is just a gain block multiplying this with this. So this is how we, we can build this differential equation in Simulink, very simple. Just obtain the highest derivative in terms of the lowest derivative and the function itself or the input itself. So this is the, <clears throat> this is the solution then take that derivative to integrator twice, use the integrator block twice because the highest derivative is uh, is uh, second and you can use two integrated blocks that will give you y simply. This is how we build this solution of the differential equation in MATLAB. Now have a look at this. This is the solution looks like something else. Let's see whether we will be able to obtain this 
in MATLAB are not. All right, let me switch back to the MATLAB to show you. Let me switch back to MATLAB and let me open Simulink. Click on the Simulink tab. And I can type here. So a window will pop up. And the window looks like this. This is the window that pops, pops up there. And you click on this. I hope this is visible. Huh? So this is the window that appears. There. And click on the Simulink library. Now let me show you this. So this is the Simulink browser library. Now what are the uh, this blocks that I need to implement this, to solve this differential equation. You know, the one is integrator block, gain block, and sum block. You can see only these are the requirements for this. So let me switch to someone like this. You can see the gain block is available here. You can check if the gain block is available here. So you can right click on this and click on add. And then you can click on the integrator block also, add it. And then I want to see the result as well. So I will add the scope as well. And I will add the sum block as well. So these are the blocks. Let me show you. So this is what I have added. So these are my. So this I'm assuming my input to the first integrator. Let me click on this is y double dash. So this is our y double dash. And then what I can do. So the output of this y double dash is simply y dash. So the output will be simply y dash, y dash. And I can either you drag it or you can bring one more block, integrator block from there. And then the output will be simply y. So the output will be simply y. And then what you can do, you click on this green and you can control, type control r simultaneously. So this is our gain and the value of this gain is, you can say minus five. I think one value is minus five and one value is minus six. So this is our minus five value. So you can add it like this. Minus five is added to what? Minus five is added to this. So then this is minus six. Huh? Just double click it and change the value to minus six. Double click on it and change the value to minus six. So you can click on this, then click on add. Now to see the result, let me add the score block. So this is a score block. Now, how do I set the initial conditions here? See, my I have given, I have given initial conditions here. This gives me y dash. So y dash at t equal to zero is one. That value is one. And y of zero, this one gives me y, y. So y of zero is zero. You can check if that value is zero. So that value is zero. Now let me run it and show you the result. So this is the, let me show you the result. Let me double click on the scoop. All right. Before I do that, let me click on this configuration tab and set this maximum step size to low value, some low value. Before I do that, let me set it to 0 0.001. Okay, 0 0.001. Right. Right. Let me 
share the screen, then run it. Now I'm going to run it. After I run it, the window that appears there is this. And you can see the solution is exactly that. This is the solution. So this is how we obtain the solution of this differential equation. And this is, by the way, the natural response part. You can add the input as well, and you can check the response. That we shall learn in the next session. I hope this is very, this is clear. This is very simple. How to obtain the solution of a differential equation. Now let me go back to this model. So this is how we obtain the solution. So I arranged the terms like highest order, ter highest order derivative on one side and the lowest order derivatives on the other side. So this is how I obtain this. Let me, where is that? This is my screen. So what I did, I arranged the differential equation in such a fashion. I put the highest order derivative on one side and then the lower order term, I mean the lower derivatives and the y on the other side, then I uh, integrated this, I means I integrated these terms, I obtained these terms, how I obtained these terms, I obtained y dash from y double dash, I put the integrator there, right, then I obtained y from y dash, this is how I, uh, I put an integrator there, and then I multiplied y dash by minus five by using a gain block of similar, similarly, I multiplied y by minus six by using a gain block. Then I added these two terms. I added these terms. So this is minus pi y dash. This is minus six y. So this is the input. And I added these two terms. Then I, that's my actually y double dash. And this is how I obtained the solution. If this is clear, let me one more screen one more time. This is y double dash. And y double dash is minus pi y dash minus six y. And then I arrange the term in such fashion. I use this integrator block twice and obtain the solution of this differential equation. All right, I hope this is clear. Now let me give you an assignment that you can solve yourself. Uh, so obtain the solution of this differential equation. zero. Y obtain the solution. You can take the initial conditions. You can vary the initial conditions. So you require here two initial conditions, here you require three initial conditions. This is a third order differential equation. So you here you require two initial conditions, you here you require two initial conditions because this is a third order differential equation. All right, let me end it here. In the next session, we'll solve one interesting problem in physics that is harmonic oscillator. How do we solve a harmonic oscillator? Similar. Let me end it here.